Yo, 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 it's your boy, Yaxter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this video, I'll show you how to make your own turntable. You'll be able to make these awesome rotating videos. Together, we'll 3D print the enclosure, go over the hardware and make your own UI in Touch Designer to control the turntable with an Arduino. At the end, we'll make a game together where we shoot some stormtroopers who just invaded the moon. So definitely stay until the end. All this is open source, so I'll put the files in the description. Let's go. Yeah. Let's take a look at the hardware. The hardware components are the same in this video compared to the previous video, so definitely check that out. We have an Arduino Uno uh, stepper driver a stepper motor and a power supply. The Arduino Uno is connected with four wires. The five volts is connected like this and all the five volts are linked. So we have a common five volts. The other three wires are connected with the enable pin, the direction pin and a pulse pin on port seven, nine and eight. Here we have the stepper motor and it's connected with the four wires to these four pins. And the main difference between this video and the previous video is a power supply. So I'm not using a lab power supply, but I'm just using a power supply I still had. I stripped down the wires and I connected it to the stepper motor driver. In my case, it was a 12 volt power supply but it could be anything between 9 and 40 volts DC. An important remark, you need to connect the negative terminal to the ground and the positive terminal to the VCC. It's important, otherwise it won't work. For the communication, we use a USB cable between the Arduino Uno and the PC. A year ago, I bought myself two 3D printers and I designed a turntable and I put all those electrical components together into the turntable and the result is this. So here's the Arduino Uno, the motor step driver and the stepper motor itself. And if we take a look at the live image, it looks something like this. So here is the Arduino Uno with the four connections. Here you have the USB connection. On the bottom there is the driver, the power supply is connected like this and here there is a stepper motor. So this white part is 3D printed and the enclosure itself is also 3D printed and I will put the cat models on Thingiverse. So you can download them yourself and print them yourself. I had a lot of projects involving a stepper motor. The thing I found lacking in Arduino is to make your own UI or to create a graphic interface to control the motor. That's why I used Touch Designer to make a new block. One block to rule them all. Behold. Lord of the Steppers. This will not be a detailed tutorial on how to create the software, but just an overview of how to use it. The software will be on my GitHub for free, so you can use it in whatever project. Just give me a shout out when you're using the code in one of your projects. Link to my GitHub is in the description. Let's take a look at the UI. So on the top part there are some variables that you can change. 
On the bottom part there are the five motor functions. First, check your bout rate. This should correspond with the bout rate of the Arduino, 19200. Next up, select the correct COM port, so in my case it's COM port 5. Alright, then enable the serial connection. This light will start blinking and now everything should work. First we are going to check the manual operation. We will move from 0 to 360 degrees depending on this slider. You can see it's not that responsive so we need to increase the speed and increase the acceleration. Now it's much more responsive. If you want to move from 0 to 90 degrees it's also possible, we do it like this. And if we want to rotate in a different direction, you do it like this. These are the total number of steps for one revolution. This is depending on the dip switches on your motor driver and I explained this in my previous video, so definitely check that out. The next motor function is to rotate the motor at a constant speed. Let's see, now the motor is moving rather slowly, so we increase the speed. It's really fast, if you want to change the direction you do it like this. And then we need to stop it. Like this. Ok, next up is the LFO. Like you can see it's just a sine wave and it moves between 0 and 90 degrees. We can increase the frequency of the sine wave. The fourth function is the main one. So if you want to make those awesome rotating videos, you do it like this. Here you can see the number of seconds it will take from the beginning to the middle to the end. So 3 seconds to get from 0 to 360 degrees, it will stay for 1 second at 360 degrees and it will go back to 0 degrees in 1 second as well. It looks like this. This is the motor movement. So if we increase the 3 to 6, it will take a lot longer to get to the 360 degrees. Let's see what it does. Ok, looks good. And then the last function is for you to put an extra input in, in it. So in my case I use the mouse coordinates and put them in here. So the most left side of the mouse corresponds with 0 degrees, if you move right it will correspond with 360 degrees. All these functions and all this UI is generated in this network. So if you want to add something or change something, you can do it in here. This is the most important part that we send to the Arduino and like you can see, if I change my mouse, this will change as well and this is the number of motor steps. We're almost there. This isn't rocket science, you know. Let's go. Let's take a look at the Arduino. It isn't that hard, just follow this flow. The main big thing I changed in this code compared to the previous code is that I use the Axel Stepper library. This is really awesome because it makes things a lot easier for us. 
it's a dedicated library to control all kinds of step promoters. So if you want to control it without a drive, it's also possible. But in this case, we have a drive and we will control it in that way. How we include this library is go to tools, go to manage libraries. It will take some time to load and you will try to update everything, blah, blah, blah. Type in Excel stepper, hit enter, select the version, the latest one, and hit install. Voila. Easy like that. So for the rest of the code, I will not go into detail and I will just pick out the most important things. If we take a look at the general concept, is that we have Touch Designer here and the Arduino there and we communicate from Touch Designer to the Arduino using a serial connection. Now with this code, we have five variables that we can transfer between Touch Designer and the Arduino. The first one, the motor movement. It's zero, then it will stop. It's one, it will move at a constant speed. Two, then it moves to a certain direction. The second variable is the direction of the motor, so zero when it's counterclockwise and one when it's clockwise. The third and the fourth variable are the motor speed and the motor acceleration. And this can be between zero and anything. It's depending on your motor and your driver. And the fifth and latest one is the number of steps. And it's between zero and 6,400, meaning between zero degrees and 360 degrees. This will depend on the type of motor you have and the type of motor driver. And in my case, 6,400 steps will correspond to one revolution. And this is depending on the dip switches you set on your motor driver. So you can see the five variables reappearing in the Arduino code. So here we declare them. This is the first step. In the setup, we say that the serial.begin here, the 90,200 is a baud rate, so the speed in which we talk to the designer. And it's very important that this baud rate corresponds with this baud rate in the designer. So 90,200 must be the same like this one. Uh, the rest is pretty self-explanatory, so we define also the enable pin. Uh, in that case, we can power on and power off the drive, so we, it will not get hot when we stop it completely. And then we go to the main loop. So the setup loop, it will only run once in the beginning of the code. The void loop, it will run constantly and it will repeat itself. So there are two main functions, the check serial and the control motor. The check serial will check all the variables that come into the serial connection. That is this part. So first it will check if there is any serial information available. And afterwards, you can see the five variables here that we talked about. So we will save those five variables of the serial connection that we get from the designer and store them into global variables that we can use all over our Arduino code. If you want to add a sixth one, you have to copy this type in the extra variable and change this from 5 to 6. Okay, so the first part is executed. We have saved our variables from test designer that we sent over the serial connection to the Arduino, and now they are stored on the global variables, these ones. So they're not zero anymore. The second part is the motor movement. So the control motor is this one, this function, and it consists of five parts. So the first part, you will move the motor to a certain number of steps clockwise. So this is 2, and the direction is 1. The second function is you will move to a certain number of steps counterclockwise, so the movement global is still 2, but now the direction is 0. Then here, this part is when you want to move your motor at a constant speed. So the first part, the motor will move clockwise. The second part, the motor will move counterclockwise. In both cases, the movement global is equal to 1. The last part is when you stop the motor, so when the movement is equal to 0, he will go to this part of the else function. A really important remark is that at the end, no torque will go to the motor whatsoever. So you will save power by doing this and the motor will not be operated at all. You can move it freely. The next step is to upload the code to the Arduino. And in Touch Designer, the serial connection needs to be off. That's very important. Otherwise, it won't work. Inside of Arduino IDE, we compile 
the code. It's done compiling. The next step is we select the correct board. In our case, it's the Arduino Uno. And select the correct COM port, 5. That's OK. We'll take a look at the Arduino itself. Now we'll upload the code and the lights will start blinking like this and we'll go off. Now it's done uploading. Thanks a lot for staying until the end. So the text designer file and the Arduino code I will put on my GitHub in this folder. I will upload the 3D printing file on my Thingiverse and on Brusa prints. And in the future I will also make an assembly video of everything. If you have any questions on the Axel Stepper library, this is the place to ask them. Thanks a lot for Don't Just Exist for this awesome tutorial. And then recently I started a small side hustle called Fixter. So definitely follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Any future projects or future tutorials or videos I will put on my socials. I also made a website called Fixter.info where I sell these custom 3D printed objects. So I got a lamster, a bikester and a stepster. So if you want to support the channel, definitely buy one of those three products. In the engineering tab, there is a list of some fun projects I worked on in the past. So if you want to work on a project together, I would love to do some collaboration with you guys. And last but not least, you know the drill. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like, all that kind of stuff, and hopefully I will see you in the future. Bye!